All right, today uh, there's actually a break in the rain. It's going to be raining for like the next five days, so I'm going to try to get some of these black locusts milled up that I uh, cut down the other day. I'll give you a quick look at what they look like. But... I can actually see them in the daylight. Okay, so the plan is to get a couple of six by sixes uh, out of these. Um, I'm gonna have to be strategic in how I cut them because, like this one here's got rot right in this section, so I'm gonna have to cut it off here and milk that way. And I might be able to get a brace out of this chunk. Uh, so I'm gonna take some of these lighter ones and I'm gonna leave this big one here. I'm gonna end up, whenever it dries back out, I'm gonna bring my sawmill right up here and just roll it on. It'd be a lot less dangerous. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take probably that one, this one after I cut it, and probably that one, this small one, and see if I can get some six by sixes out of it. So. Okay, as you can see, this log goes up and it comes back down. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take some of these high spots off of this top. Like This is a high spot, way down there is a knot. Uh, so I'm going to take these off, kind of flatten it, then roll it over, and then take the other high spots off of the other side, just to get me closer to, uh, to flat so I can figure out the best way. Right now it's too long, the way it sits is too long for the sawmill. So I'm going to get it kind of flat and see do I want to take my length off of this side or do I want to take it off of that side. So I gotta, I'm going to do this, open it up a tiny bit, um, a couple of, of uh, knots that might have some rot in them. So once I kind of cut them off, I'll see if it goes the whole way in the log. If so, then I'll just, like this knot here, say this one's rotten, I'll just lop it off there and forget about the rot. So. That's the plan. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit these couple of high spots real quick. All right, so here's the plan now. Um, the majority of these are touching, majority of the bunks are touching the log, all except for right here. So this one's gonna throw me off uh, more than anything else. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut it off right about here. Um, that gets me really close to where this, because this one's actually touching the bunk. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right in the middle of these two bunks and uh, that'll get rid of the little bit of soft uh, heartwood. Right now, if I'm looking at this picture of my six by six here, and uh, I mean, by the time we continue that line straight through, it's gonna be different than if this, since this is up probably four inches off the bunk. So 
if you continue that through, I'm going to go off by four inches down there. So I'm going to get as close as I can to the bunk so that I know it's the same the whole way down. Okay, actually that's perfect. You can see this is what the end looked like. You see all that soft rot and heartwood. The new one here, nice and fresh and yellow green color. So nice tight grain. That's what I want to see. It's touching the bunk. So we're good. I don't know if you can see these uh, dips in the bark, but it does make it hard whenever you're trying to use your chainsaw. Like when you're digging the teeth in there, like you can see right here. I. Uh, I finally got a nice bite in here, so I just left my chainsaw there and just rocked it forward. Um, it's a pain if you need it someplace in between here, you really can't get a bite at all. It's, you gotta rely on your actual strength and just push the saw through until you actually can start biting. Stuff actually looks pretty good so far on this side. There's no rot. You can see there's a little hole in the bark here. Okay, so I skipped the uh, boring part of me just trying to pry this up by myself and slide the shims under it, but I got this end shimmed up to what that end is, and then I got this all nice and squared. My frame is squared on it, perfect right where it's sitting. So I checked it multiple places to hold it down the length of the log, so we should be good. I'm going to take one cut off and then flip it 180. I won't need any more shims, and I should be nice and square.
feet so I just cut it in the middle got two ten footers um, it was pretty bowed so I cut it right in the middle of the bow so I got two pretty straight logs uh, I think I ended up with about five total pieces of six by six um, so not too bad I'll be able to use uh, some of the smaller ones for posts I think I already have the ones I need uh, set aside for beams um, and then tomorrow I'm gonna mill up the rest uh, out in the field so I'll show you how to use the, um, it's, I think it's like $700, $750, you can get the ramp and winch attachment for the LT15 GO. Um, I'll show you how that works and it's actually, I prefer it sometimes. Um, if I'm just doing a whole bunch of logs, I can park beside the pile and just roll them on. But the uh, one log was so big that when I pick it up, it actually uh, tips my tractor. So I figured it would just be easier to park the uh, sawmill beside it and just roll them on and then it makes the mess out in the field and I don't have to worry about it inside the barn. So uh, that will be tomorrow. I don't know when I'll get the video uploaded but uh, I'll record it tomorrow. So if you enjoy these types of videos go ahead and uh, subscribe uh, or give it a thumbs up and if you have any sort of suggestions or stuff you'd like to see uh, feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know uh, some of your ideas. Uh, if, especially like camera angles and stuff like that. I've been playing around experimenting. So uh, I think this is the first time I got to play with the GoPro. So uh, let me know if you like the GoPro, uh, better angles for it, whatever. So uh, yeah, just let me know in the comments.